Hello everybody, hope you're doing well in these challenging times. My name is Nikola and I'm a head of color in MPC Shanghai. I started uh, in post-production as a motion graphic designer in Broadcast Corporation in Serbia. After that I moved to advertising first as a video editor and then later uh, as an online editor. That's how I get introduced to craft of color grading. After working as a film and commercial colorist in Serbia for a few years, I got a job offer from South Korea in 2012. So I moved to Seoul. I stayed there for a little bit less than two years and then I moved to Shanghai and I'm still here. I also had a brief opportunity to work in Tokyo, Japan. It's mainly commercial work. Sometimes some short narrative forms and sometimes feature films. Cars, beauty work, lifestyle, sometimes involving some heavy VFX projects. Let's check scene settings. As you can see, my working color space is set to Arilog C white gamut. Great result color space is always from stack. And display rendering transform in this case is Ari Photometric V2. I guess in time I get used to this setup since it gives me that smooth roll off in the shadows and also a certain behavior of the base light tools. So I use it with the most camera sources. Unless the output is specified as ACES or HDR, this would be my preferred setup. My master in color space is mostly set to Rec. 709, since my work is mainly TV commercials and my monitoring is external Rec. 709 display. We can take a quick look at the color space journey panel just to make sure that the signal processing is ok and there is no errors or warnings. It looks good. There are a few shots on the timeline shot uh, mostly with the red and array camera. I usually leave base light color management to take care of uh, input color space automatically. I also prefer to keep cursor resolution to maximum quality because these days we are dealing with a lot of raw camera sources, different raw flavors and it's easier to monitor things in full raster. Viewing color space in this case is matching mastering color space which is Rec. 709. I'm not a big fan of fixed layer structure or fixed node structure. I'm not saying it cannot be helpful in some situation, but I find it somehow limiting and it forces you to work in a certain way, which can sometimes result in similar looks. I prefer to play around and experiment with image in almost every project, to push things around. But this is just my preference and some other artists will prefer a fixed layer approach. Best thing is that base light will work very good in both ways. I worked on few other systems along the line and they all performed quite well at the moment. And then four and a half years ago I had an opportunity to try Baselight and I get hooked up immediately. I like the most, uh, I guess, uh, Blackboard 2 panel because to me it feels like a musical instrument almost. For me it's always easier to work with the people that I worked before than with the new clients. Uh, there might be some surprises here and there, but uh, in general, from my experience, it's kind of a rule. Since it's hard for me to work as usual and explain what I'm doing at the same time, I recorded this in span of 25 minutes and speed it up to 5 minutes to make it digestible. So here we have shot that was recorded with red camera and as you can see conditions are not ideal. So I tried to give it a freestyle beauty treatment. So I've started as always with some general contrast and balancing and setting some basic skin tone. First secondary intervention was to even out the lip color with a freehand mask and tracking.
Then I get rid of the blue tint in the shadows. Next was some general relighting on the face and reducing a hot spot on her shoulder. Here I try to further improve skin color and the texture with the texture equalizer. As you can see, her swimsuit was tinted, so I've tried to make it white. Then I moved on to more detailed skin retouching with partial masks combined with the trackers for individual parts of the face using Croc Beauty shader. I've separated face in four different parts for better control but also to try to preserve details around the mouth and nose. Next thing were eyes. I want them brighter and also to pop color a bit. I usually prefer to push things further while tweaking the mask and trackers and pull back once that's done. I've also tried to remove little imperfections on her nose using a paint tool and tracker. That was delicate, but I think looks quite good. Next I continue to refine overall look and texture of the image. One trick that I'm doing often is to try to see how image would look as a black and white and that can help me to fine tune saturation further. A little more makeup on the lips cannot hurt in this case. The next stage was a bit of QC work and improving a skin color mask. Once that's done, very last step was to fine-tune the mouth and that's it. Let's quickly go through all layers. I could push this even further in terms of beauty work, but I always prefer to leave that for online department. Well, I guess that's up to clients to trigger. I usually rely heavily on my uh, sensibility and also on the client brief but sometimes you work on the project uh, with the uh, established brands with the uh, with the uh, established color aesthetics so you need to follow that so that's where the technical side comes in handy but if I need to choose I would say I probably follow my instincts 
I think in this moment in time when AI is popping up everywhere and even in our softwares, uh, I think it's really important to recognize which skill will stay, will stand the test of time and what is going to be replaced with uh, machine learning. So you don't left out hanging with something that uh, eventually will be done in the software automatically. If you're using Baselight on the MacBook or iMac and you don't have a panel, here is one useful feature called Gestural Editing. It can help you to speed up workflow and enables you to grade in full screen. Let's add a layer and enable Gestural Editing from Edit menu. So how it works? We'll switch to full screen. If you move your cursor towards the top of the screen, you will see all available controls for selected operator, in this case base grade. If you move cursor even closer to the top, you will get granular controls. So let's try balance. Just click on the screen and while holding pen or mouse button down, you simply draw a circle. If the radius is smaller, control is precise. If you draw a bigger circle, sensitivity is higher. Let's quickly turn on extended range so we can push things further. Let's try some other operators like a video grade. You can see that a different set of controls is now available. Let's change the gain. You can see that now we're affecting RGB gain, but say you just want to change blue channel. We can quickly switch off red and green. Ok, this looks good. You can drag and drop grade to another shot and quickly adjust it in full screen. As you can see, if you combine gestural editing with few shortcuts, you can go through your dailies pretty quickly. I'm doing remote grading for a few years now and I actually I quite like it. I think this whole situation with lockdown and working from home will even help push remote grading even more to the mainstream. I would advise them to watch movies, old and new, because everything regarding film language is there. Try to understand the film language, try to use it. Don't waste too much time with the technical specification and uh, all those technical measurements. Try to talk with people and try to build a network and, and to connect to other artists. If you cannot grow in a certain environment, just move on. So here we have one typical modern looking shot full of neon lights. Looks pretty good, but as you can see there are some problems with these oversaturated areas. We'll try to get rid of it. In situations like this I would usually try tool compress gamut first. This approach can only take us up to certain point, but it doesn't produce overall clean and pleasing result. So let's try another approach. In general, I'm a big fan of base light color management, but in this case we'll try to work around it. So for the start, let's override the input color space and set it to Rec 709. And then we will add True Light Operator. Set it to Tetrahedral Interpolation and choose Internal Generic Film Profile. I'll rename this layer to Film. So the goal is to place this shot in a little bit better starting point. First, we're going to compensate overall gamma and saturation in video operator. Then I'll add another layer and use base grade to tune the saturation and get rid of the oversaturated parts in the shadows. Ok, I think it already looks better than original. 
Let's play a little bit more before true light operator and see if we can pull more from this shot. As you can probably see, we managed to get rid of the most of these neon artifacts, but let's see if we can separate character more from the background. We can check before and after. Let's play it a few times to see through the shot. Okay, for the end we can try to put back a little bit of that original neon feel. So let's add another layer. Change blending to raw image. And blending type to add. I'll blend it very discreet just to get that extra kick in neon parts and bring back life to shot. I'll add another layer to control saturation and that's it. Let's take a look. Before and after again. It looks better to my taste. Another thing I was asked for this shot is to remove these tracking markers from the guy's suit. So let's add paint operator. And while holding Option Command, define the area for the clone stamp. Looks good. Next, we'll add one point tracker. Track the marker, and that's it. Now I just need to repeat process for the rest of the markers, but I think you get the idea. So that was all from my side. Thanks for watching and stay safe.